In this video, I'm going to cover how we can design an IMC-based controller um, with an unstable process. And so in this example, we're going to be working with the process GP is equal to 2 over quantity S plus 2 times quantity S minus 1. And as a recall, um, because we have this um, term here, the S minus 1, we now have a positive pull. S is equal to 1. And having positive pulls in our denominator causes this overall process to be unstable. And so we're going to have to design a controller that is able to um, make this inherently unstable process stable. And if we are also given that there is no plant model mismatch, we can assume that G, which I'm letting be equal to GP for the sake of simplicity, um, be equivalent to G tilde, which is our internal model and uh, we're going to design our controller around it. So if we look at our um, block diagram here, we'll recognize that GC uh, is equal to Q divided by one minus Q times G tilde. And um, this is because the character's equation here, we are adding in the term, we have this minus sign here. Um, so it might be a little bit different from what we're used to. And in addition to that, G tilde is equivalent to um, G tilde minus the stable part of G tilde times G tilde plus the non-stable part of um, G tilde. And so in this case, we can define based on GP, G tilde minus to be this nice stable part, which is two over S plus two and G tilde minus or plus to be um, one over s minus one this positive pull part that we really don't like and so the next step in the imc design method is defining this term q and q is defined to be some filter f times g tilde minus inverse and we know what g tilde minus inverse the question now is what are we going to like QB? Uh, what our filter be? And um, in this case, we have to make Q must be proper. And so to be proper, the degree of the denominator must be greater than or equal to that of the numerator. And there can't be any um, positive pulls. And so um, what we're going to do is let our filter F be equivalent to, because we want to get rid of this S minus one term, we're going to stick S minus one in the numerator of our filter. And in addition to that, we're going to need to raise lambda S plus one to the second power um, in our filter. Otherwise, we'd end up getting a uh, an improper Q term, an internal model controller. And so now that we have established what to let our filter be, and we're going to be going forward with this, um, we will uh, now break down this uh, term uh, slightly. And uh, if we look at the denominator here, one minus Q times G tilde, if we break it down, we can recognize that this is equivalent to one minus Q, which we established to be F times G tilde minus inverse, and then G tilde was equal to G minus tilde times G plus tilde. And we'll see how these cancel out quite nicely. So our numerator, I'm sorry, our denominator is really one minus G plus tilde. And so we're gonna use this uh, moving forward in our simplifications as well. And so the first thing we're going to do moving forward is evaluate what Q is for our um, controller GC, our feedback controller. So Q was equal to uh, our filter F times G tilde minus inverse and um, plugging in these numbers. So we have S minus one over lambda S plus one quantity squared is our filter F. And then we're going to multiply this by G tilde minus inverse. We already know that G tilde minus was two over S plus two. So now it's going to be S plus two over two. And we know what our Q term is. 
And uh, I apologize, I made an error here in the uh, numerator uh, or denominator simplification. So we should have this filter F uh, multiplying uh, G tilde plus. And so now if we expand our denominator and analyze what it is, we would have one minus our filter F, which is uh, S minus one over lambda S plus one quantity squared. And we're going to be multiplying this term by G tilde plus which we established was one over S minus one. And this is the cool part. We can now cancel out um, that uh, positive pole that we had. And uh, further simplifying this, what we find is that we will have uh, lambda S plus one quantity squared minus one divided by lambda S plus one quantity squared. And so this is our denominator and uh, so now if we uh, begin to plug this in to uh, evaluate what GC is, we'll have F times G tilde minus inverse, which we already established to be S minus one times S plus two quantity divided by lambda S plus one quantity squared, and then times two, I'll leave it out there. And then we are going to be multiplying this by the inverse of this term that we just evaluated. Um, so what we'll see is that this becomes lambda S plus one quantity squared divided by lambda S plus one quantity squared minus one. And we'll see how these two terms cancel nicely. What we will find when we evaluate what our denominator should be is that GC is equivalent to S minus one times S plus two quantity divided by and two lambda squared S squared plus four lambda S minus or plus zero. And um, what we're going to do now is analyze what our GC term is because we wanna find the range of lambda um, that's stable for our, for our controller. Because at the end of the day, uh, this whole the whole point of IMC is to design controllers and determine the tuning parameters and the ranges we can uh, move these tuning parameters to uh, to maintain a stable system. And so in this case, uh, if we implement the quadratic formula to determine the, uh, the roots of our denominator because it's a quadratic uh, equation, um, what we will find, as we'll recall, we have minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac quantity over 2a. This is equivalent to minus 4 times lambda plus or minus square root of 16 lambda squared minus 4 times a, which is 2 lambda squared times uh, 0 because our c term is 0. So uh, that term cancels out and then we divide it by two times a, which was two lambda squared. And what we end up finding is that this is equal to minus four lambda plus or minus four lambda divided by four lambda squared. And if we divide all these terms by four lambda, we will get minus one plus or minus one quantity divided by uh, lambda. So these are the, the poles um, of our closed loop transfer function. And uh, so what we do now is we analyze each one of these roots. So minus one plus one is zero. And minus one minus one is minus two over lambda. And because we know that the poles uh, must be in the left-hand plane, they must have a real part uh, that is always less than zero. Uh, what this tells us is that this term has to be less than zero. Uh, therefore, we can let our lambda uh, be anything between zero and positive infinity. In other words, lambda must be greater than zero um, for this to hold. So we determine the range of too many parameters we can have, as well as the uh, controller transfer function that we should go with, which is this line here. And um, this concludes how we're able to uh, use IMC 
when we are dealing with positive pulls and unstable process um, to design a proper controller. And so I hope you guys find it useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.